here. So we, we, um, it, it may seem like a very generous thing that we're doing here for you, giving you a free seminar and training you how to do a bridal show, but it's not. It's very self-serving. <laughs> we, we want you to succeed. If you don't succeed, we don't succeed. And so we like to make every effort that we can to help our exhibitors, especially our newer exhibitors, succeed because it's a specialized environment and your regular kind of selling might not work as well here. And some people think of a bridal show selling as just at the bridal show itself, but that's just a small part of the bridal show opportunity. You have the pre-show opportunity and the post-show opportunity. So we want to make sure that you know to take advantage of all of those. So we'll go through all of those kinds of details when we go through this presentation. So I'll talk to you as each slide comes up. And feel free to ask questions as we go so that you don't forget it and we talk about it while we're in that moment. Um, so an overview of tonight, we're going to talk about how effective consumer shows are and why. We've got um, some handouts for you that we'll give out as we talk about those topics. And then we'll start right on in with tonight's topic. So like I just mentioned, we have three major points where you can have an advantage of uh, meeting with the brides and marketing the brides. And in, in real estate, they call them touch points, and it's just a really easy way to, to, to say. So we talk about touch points and marketing. And um, like one, one sales thing is you have to, someone has to see your business name uh, three to seven times before they remember it. And so you want to make sure that you're touching the brides as many times as possible, not just once. And so we're going to talk about some opportunities of touching the brides more. Um, so you've got pre-show opportunities, at show actions that you can take to enhance your exhibit, and then post-show follow-up. And we'll go through each of those individually. So your pre-show opportunities. So you get your first touch possibility before the show. And the ways that you can do that, there's lots of ways, but you can invite brides to the show. You can invite your friends to the show. Your friends know brides. Brides know brides. People in that age range know each other uh, kind of thing. So there's some opportunities there. You can use social media. You can use your blog. You can use your website. You can use email, postcards, any kind of thing that you can think of. Old marketing, new marketing, they all work and they give you lots of different opportunities. So you've got some brides in your database already, so you can market those brides that you've talked to, you can market the brides that you've already booked. It doesn't make any difference. You're getting in front of them again, and that's important. And somebody that you might invite to the show may already have you as the venue, but they don't have a florist yet. And so everybody benefits by that cross-marketing that we're all gonna be doing. And we're gonna be doing it on all of our social media sites as well. So uh, we've got postcards, we've got it in magazines, we've got it on posters and those are being distributed all over the county and into Santa, Marie, Santa Barbara County as well. So we're onto that right now. And why would you invite prospects to the show? We kind of covered that already. It's really a lot about cross-marketing. It's about touching the brides more than once. And another reason to touch the brides more than once is so that every time you talk to them, call them, post something on your Facebook page, it's not about, please book with me. You don't want to always be selling them. Don't always be selling them. Be offering them information. Be the expert in your field, and that will get you respect, and they'll remember you, and they'll be grateful that you're not calling them again to try to sell them something like everybody else is. And so think of reasons why you would want to reach out to the bride. You can say, one is, come to the bridal show. I'm in booth XYZ. You know, come by and visit. We're going to have chocolates or, you know, taste of wine or something like that. Um, you can, um, hmm. You can post things on your Facebook page. You can um, send them all kinds of invitations. And who to invite, not just brides, not just brides that you know, but in, in real estate, I don't know if you've ever known a real estate agent, but they wear pins that say, uh, I love referrals. Um, there's not a real estate agent you meet that does not give you your card, their card and ask you if you're looking for a house. If you say no, they go, well, if you know anybody that is, here's my card, you know? and. Real estate agents are like the best marketers there are. Um, they may seem obnoxious, but we do it with a little bit more finesse because we're creative types. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then at the show, um, when you're in your booth, there's a few things to think about. Let's, let's, let's take these point by point. I tend to get off, off track, so if I take a point by point, we'll make sure we cover everything. So the first thing is you want to think about your booth as your storefront. And so... I don't know if you've been, you've been to expos before, trade shows, bridal shows, any kind of expo. And how many times have you seen someone who's got their table at the back of their booth, no, the table at the front of the booth, they're standing behind the table, and you walk up to them, and there's that table between you and them. Have you ever seen that at a retail outlet? 
Yeah. You don't put a blockage mm -hmm. between yourself mm -hmm. and your client. You want your client to have access to you and you want access to them. So don't put your table at the front of your booth. Make it welcoming. Make them feel free to come in and visit with you. You can put the table at the back. You can put it on the side. You can use our table. You can not use our table. You can bring any tables in that you want. You can furnish your booth any way you like. And if you take a look at our Facebook page under the photos, there are tons and tons and tons of photos of booths. And so, and we'll go through some photos here tonight too. So you'll be able to see a lot of different booths and a lot of different setups. And just get a feel for how that booth setup feels to you. Would you want to walk into that booth? Mm -hmm. um, so think about it as your storefront. Um, while you're in your booth, the shows are incredibly busy. There's going to be brides walking past your booth. And you've got three seconds to get their attention. And so you want to do everything you can to make sure that, one, you've got enough people in your booth to talk to all those brides that are walking by your booth. Uh, two, have a, um, have a catchphrase or two or three that you're going to use to get their interest into starting a conversation with you. And, um, and bring your contracts with you. Um, it's possible some people will look at the show. And how many of you look at the show normally, Anthony? So if you don't have your planner with you, if you don't know what dates you're available, if you don't have your contract, car salesmen don't let you walk away. If you've got somebody who's that interested, you don't want to let them walk away and say, I'll talk to you on Monday. You want to do something to lock them down. Get a deposit, get some kind of signed contract before they leave. And we have a vendor um, kitchen area where you can even bring somebody that's ready to book to take them out of the the. the the fray, you can take them into that room and use one of the tables and chairs in there and get your contract signed in there. So make sure you have enough people in your booth so that you can lose somebody to go sign contracts and still have people in your booth to work the brides as they're walking by. Um, it's, it's very busy. One time we had a complaint, you know, we always ask for comments after the show. And one complaint that I got I thought was a really high quality complaint. And they said there were too many brides. <laughs> I don't know how to do. I don't know how to answer that one. I'm like, okay, we'll spend less money on advertising. <laughs> like, and so that person really needed to come to this seminar to understand how to make sure that they were frustrated because the brides were walking past their booth and they didn't have an opportunity to capture all of them. And so one thing to remember is that you do get a list of all the brides that register at the show afterwards. And so you can market them after the show. And um, you should also have something in your own booth to get them to put their name and contact information down with as well. Uh, give something away in your booth, something small, it doesn't have to be anything big. But just something to make them stay at your booth for a few seconds longer. And plus, you'll get their contact information. And some brides will not give us their contact information. They won't fill out a registration form at the front. So it could be that there are going to be some brides that won't do that because they don't want spam. Mm -hmm. But they may fill out their information at your booth. So you may catch some brides that we're not able to capture their information for. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to get that information in your booth, too. Um, yeah. Can I make a comment? Of course. Sure. Um, when we're designing our booth, we actually, we don't take them to the kitchen. We actually make sure that we have a space in our booth where we can actually have a bride and groom booking because we think it's the coolest thing in the world for other brides and grooms to be walking by and see a bride and groom standing there and putting their information into our computer and, and booking with us right there on this. It's like the best marketing because if this bride is booking with us, then man, we better talk to these guys. You must have something going on. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. Yeah, and, and on that point, um, how do you attract somebody to your booth when they're all walking by and there's all these other booths to look at? And think about the, all the senses. You want to engage as many senses as possible to get their attention. And so a really great thing in a booth is some kind of action or a demonstration. Like for you, it could be some kind of makeup or hair or something that's going on like that. Um, for Anthony, it's signing contracts. You can even have a shield come in and sign a contract in your booth, you know? It doesn't have to be a real contract. I've <laughs> never thought of that before, but yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, and another thing, um, and we'll talk more about booth design later, but like Anthony's talking about, think about what kind of things you're going to need in your booth. And I recommend that at your house, you measure out your booth size and lay your booth out, just like you would if you're moving into a new place. 
lay it out beforehand so that you know what you're going to do and you know what's going to fit. You're not going to be surprised when you go and set up on the day of the show. And it's 8 by 10, right? They're 8 by 10. Mm -hmm. And it's 10 feet across the front and 8 feet deep. And our tables are 8 feet long. Um, you can get, you can rent tables that are called uh, conference tables and they're about this wide. And they can be 6 or 8 feet long. And those are really handy because most things that you want to put on a table are not bigger than this depth. And that takes up a lot less of your booth. Our eight, our eight foot tables are like two and a half feet wide. Mm -hmm. So they take up a lot of booth space. And we'll be sending out an email to ask if you want your table, if you want your chair prior to the show. And so we'll get all that information from you so that hopefully your booth will be set up exactly like you want it before you get there. So, but if there should be a table in your booth and you don't want it, all you have to do is push it out into the aisle and we'll take it away. So um, it's, it's easy to go either way. And there's black pipe and drape. The pipe and drape is black. It's okay. eight feet tall. And it's 10 feet wide. And then do we have the side rails? Also? There's no side rails. Okay. Yeah, so it's open. Okay. And yep. then we can hang stuff from the... You can hang stuff from the top pipe. It's galvanized pipe, so it's pretty sturdy. And um, you can hang things. There's two panels of drape. So you can hang something from this side and this side and from the middle on that pipe, okay. like with zip ties. Okay. Or if you use um, a thin wire, you can go through the fabric, and so it'll go between the threads so you don't damage it. And you can use that wire and just hang things up. So if you need more catch points than just three. There's also those hooks that go over the bar. There's those hooks, the little S hooks. Mm -hmm. And they have those at Home Depot, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> yeah. The Bath and Beyond? Like curtain. Oh, oh like shower, shower curtain. curtain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Myers. Yeah. Myers does too. Um, what about, I have to work at Myers. So uh? Oh, plug that a little bit. Um, how big is diameter? It's inch about like that. Inch and a quarter. 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 Okay. Okay. Inch and a quarter? No, it's not two inch pipe. It's, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's the inch okay. and a quarter pipe. And that's 10 feet tall? It's 8 feet tall. 8 feet tall. 8 feet tall. And some people want to use a different color than black, and you're certainly welcome to do that. You'll, in most cases, you'll have somebody behind you, and so you're both using that black drape. But if you want to bring in some other colored fabric, you can, you can use different methods to try to pin it. To, oh, nice. <laughs> you can pin it to the top of the pipe, and then you can have white or pink or whatever. And then uh, Anne has uses a lot of. Did you use a lot of crystals? If I remember right. Um, no, I had a whole bunch. I had canvas prints and, and the banner. I did yeah. see some with crystals. Yeah, I think Kim uses a lot of crystals, yeah. and Debbie uses a lot of. Um, um, like baker's racks, I think, mm -hmm. kind of things to use the vertical space more. Yeah, and that's another thing. A lot of people just think about this space right here. But remember, you've got all this space up here too. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we don't not use all that space. Portable bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Right, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So you can, you can build it up. And I think we're going to talk about signage later, but as long as we're talking about the details of the booth design, let's talk about your signage in your booth. You want to make sure that the bride can see what it is that you do very quickly and easily. If they've already got a photographer booked, you know, they're going to walk right past you to say photographer. And that's what you want them to do. If you don't want to talk to somebody that's already booked what you do, mm -hmm. you want them to leave you alone because you want to talk to a qualified bride who can use your services. Because if you're talking to somebody who's not good for you, you're going to miss some other brides who are walking by. So we'll get to qualifying the prospects in a minute. But, um, and so, you want your sign to be high, so you want to hang it from the pipe up tall. Because once people get into the room, they're all like, say, five to six feet tall. If your sign's anywhere below the top of my head, nobody's going to see your sign. It needs to be over, over the head. So make sure your signage is high. Um, you can have a table at the back and have, have things up high on that, or you can hang it from the, the back. Some people may, um, like if you want to rent uh, additional pipe, We've got, each of the booths are secured with a pipe here, a pipe here that go up, and then a pipe that goes across. If you bring another pipe here and a pipe here, you can have that connected here to where you've got like a little canopy. Mm -hmm. And then you can do some sort of decor around that, and you can hang things from that. Mm -hmm. And so you can use more vertical space with that. So do you know offhand, like the dimension, like, so is the pipe 10 feet across, is it all like the whole 10 feet across? Pipes are adjustable, so they can oh, be okay. 6 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet. Oh wow, okay. And that so you kind have of thing. So two you can just go six feet. And then there's two in the back too, you said? Yeah, there's two in the back. Okay. And that's that's what we provide the back. Right. We provide the back pipe and drape. But with one of the rental oh, companies, you could rent 
pipes for the front uh, and connect that into our pipe because they're all they're like Legos. They're all interconnectable. Uh, okay. So, yeah, and it's like, very inexpensive. Like any of like Taylor Rental. Taylor Rental, got you covered. Okay. All Thanks. of those types of people. Is yeah. that PVC or is it steel pipe? It's steel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can build your own PVC. Yeah, my husband mm -hmm. built it. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and. The only to be concerned about with that is to make sure you're not blocking the side so that people can sit down on the aisle. Cars are blocked. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the rules for the sides are uh, you can be eight foot tall from the back of the booth, four feet forward. So you can be solid four feet forward. But after that, you can only be like four feet tall if it's solid. If it's sheer, you're fine. If it's dangling crystals, you're fine. As long as it's not blocking the view of each exhibitor as the brides are going down the aisle. So, and we'll have some, some pictures of that kind of thing. And another good thing to remember while you're in the booth is, you know, what is the purpose of each of your tables? And it's really good to have a table up front. Um, I, I like just a little round or a little square table up at the front so that you can have your brochure, your business card, all of that kind of thing, any information that you want the brides to take. Because sometimes they're busy and they're in a hurry and they're just gathering information and throwing it in their bag. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people trying to get into a booth when it's full of people to get back to the information that's at the back of the booth. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've got it in the back and you've also got it in the front for anybody who's rushing through or who just doesn't you know, have time to talk to you because you're busy. But they can get your information and call you later. So definitely have some information up front. And then you want to identify and qualify your prospects. Um, <clears throat> we're probably going to talk about this again during staffing, but I want to talk about it now because it's so important. Um, like we talked about just a minute ago, you, you don't want to be spending a lot of time with somebody who's not really going to be using your services. So you want to uh, control who you talk to. And different tasks are better for different people. Some people are very outgoing and comfortable talking to strangers. Some people are not. And so the person that you have as your qualifier needs to be a very outgoing person, very comfortable in talking to strangers, comfortable talking to strangers who are trying to walk past you. And so make sure that it's somebody who can do that. Um, make sure that they've got a script and that they understand what they should be saying. And you want to ask, uh, you want to ask open-ended questions where there's not a yes or no answer, so that they have to talk to you. And so you can even Google, you know, what those kinds of questions might be for you. So you can come up with a list of those, but make sure you write them down because in the heat of the moment you get a lot of adrenaline and it's very exciting and you'll forget. So make sure you've got your list of the most important things that you want to remember and bring it with you. Um, and so you've got the qualifying person and the qualifying person is probably not going to be your best closing person. So you need a qualifier and a closer in your booth. And your closing person is if the qualifier is out there talking to brides. So, Oh, do you still need flowers? Oh, oh, and what's, what day is your wedding? April 7th? Oh, we're already booked April 7th. Okay, bye-bye. And we go on to the next one. And so there's lots of things that will qualify the bride. It could be that you're a top-end photographer who charges $15,000 for a wedding. And you want to qualify them on price pretty quickly because there's not as many weddings in that price range. So you want to get through the brides that are on a $2,000 budget and get them on their way so that you're only talking to the brides that are truly qualified for your business on the day that you're available in your price range. And so figure out what all those questions are for you and make sure that your qualifier is asking those brides those questions. And when they qualify a bride and they seem to be interested in your type of work, they'll get them into the booth and turn them over to the closer. And the closer is the person who talk about the pricing, the packages, the details, all of that kind of thing. So make sure you've got at least one of each of those in your booth. And again, we have the kitchen area, so if you've got enough staff, you can have some taking a break in the kitchen and some who are fresh out there working because you're going to need a break. It's going to be four hours long of being very busy. Um, and um, so think about that. Think about eating on the morning of. Um, we do have setup available on Saturday, but if you set up everything on Sunday, you're going to be in there from starting at, say, 9 o'clock and setting up your booth and then the brides are going to start coming in at noon mm -hmm. and you're not going to stop until four and you don't want to be hungry and cranky and tired and not focused mm -hmm. so make sure that you either eat beforehand and or bring some food with you or try to set up as much as you can on saturday so you have less to do on sunday and that'll make you fresher and there are some teams that even have 
somebody comes in to do the setup, and those people leave, and then the sales team comes in at noon or 11.30, and then they're there to sell, and they're very fresh. What is the setup times, and do you need to know in advance if you're going to set up on the Saturday? Do we need to know in advance what? If we're going to come and set up on the Saturday. Okay, no, we don't need to know anything in advance, so you'll just be able to come in. On Saturday, setup is 1 to 2.30, and this year we may make it noon or 12.30 because we've got our setup a little bit streamlined now, and we'd like to give you guys more time. So let, you'll get an email. All this information will come to you in an email, too. Um, so if you want to start early, as soon as we're finished, we're going to open the doors. So if you're there at noon waiting and we finish, we'll open the doors and you can come on in. And, or you can come at 1, you know, kind of a thing. But we're probably going to do 12.30. So for you guys, it's 12.30. Let's just say that. And um, we should be ready by 12.30 and maybe even earlier. I think we were ready at... I think it was 12 last time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and that's on Saturday, because that's when we do our setup in the morning. We start early in the morning and get everything ready. And once our setup is ready, then we can let you guys in to come and do your setup. And so uh, you can stay until 2.30 on the Saturday. And then on Sunday, we open at 8 o'clock for everybody to come in. And at 8 o'clock in the morning, there's not many people coming in. So if you waited until Sunday and you want to come in at 8, It'll be easy parking, easy unloading, all of that kind of thing. Uh, once it gets more toward uh, 10 o'clock, then it starts getting crowded and it's hard to find a place to back up to and everybody's getting stressed because it's close to showtime and they're not ready yet. So you want to make sure that you give yourself enough time. And there are some people who come in at 8 o'clock on Sunday, set up, they're done by 10, and then they go somewhere and have lunch. And then they come back refreshed and ready to go when it's time for the show. What's the time on Saturday? Saturday is uh, 12.30 to 2.30 for setup. And then the show, then on the day of, we're open from 8 o'clock till like 11.30 for setup. And then we open the doors at noon, and from noon to 4, the brides are there. And this year, it doesn't pertain to everybody at the expo, but we're also doing a fashion show this year. That's going to be at 10.30 in the morning. It's going to be down at the Madonna Hotel's main ballroom. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have that going on prior to the show. We'll only be able to hold 160 people, so that'll probably be maybe 100 brides and 60 of their, their wedding party. And we're going to keep them at 11.30 when the, show, the fashion show's finished and do a question and answer session with them so that they can't go up yet. We don't want them going up right away because they'll be standing in the sun waiting for a half an hour for the show to open. So we're going to keep them down here as long as we can, then we'll send them up. And then when the doors open, there's normally a long line of people waiting to get in and the hall fills up fairly quickly. So once 12 o'clock comes, you'll have people at your booth within 30 minutes for sure. Any other questions on that one? Okay. Um, you want to document when you're at the show, when you're talking to your brides. Um, and what that means is um, make sure you're keeping track of who you're talking to and what you talked about, um, especially once you get a really qualified lead. Um, and so hopefully you'll have them signing something in your booth, so you'll have some information on them. Uh, but you might want to have a legal pad where you kind of keep track of your hottest prospects and write down their name, write down identifying characteristics about them, information about their wedding that they told you, so that when you do talk to them later, they'll think you remembered them. You know, you can't remember all those people that well. So, but if you take a few notes, it'll help jog your memory so that when you do talk to them, your conversation will be a little bit easier. So think about those kinds of things. And then on the reverse end documentation, it's nice when you're talking to someone in your booth and um, write something and you're giving them your brochure, write something on your brochure that you're giving them a smiley face or your phone number or anything, just something that connects you a little bit better with them. So that when they look at that brochure of yours, they go, oh yeah, I remember that person. Yeah, I remember when she wrote that. And it helps to keep you connected. So think about those things. Um, and then special offers. Uh, you can have uh, a giveaway in your booth, like we talked about, that they'll be signing up for us to see if they win. And when you have a giveaway in your booth, it's something that we don't announce at the show. You'll give that away after, in the week after the show. You'll call your winning bride and let them know that they won and make arrangements to get your prize to them. And your prize can be something like um, a booth prize. can be, if you're a photographer, it can be an engagement photo session. Or if you're a coordinator, it can be, you know, a small consultation kind of thing. You don't want to give away too much, 
But it's nice when you can give away something that doesn't cost you anything, mm -hmm. you know, or you can find something small to give away. Um, and um, some, some people give away more than one thing, you know, if it's something that's inexpensive that, that, that they can give away easily. Um, I just wanted to comment, <coughs> my first show many years ago, I gave away way, way too much. It's hot, as a service-based thing, like working for hours for free. Yes. <laughs> so don't make that mistake. It doesn't have to be something huge. And then um, something that I learned recently is that, um, for me, sometimes it's kind of hard to find something that like connects because it's a service. But um, it could be something that's like trending. Have you guys seen those fit fit things? Mm. So I see a lot of people giving those away, even though they're not like fitness related, because you know everyone wants one or it's popular. Um, so I just want to throw that out How there. much are they? Yeah. They're on on Amazon Prime. They're like a hundred bucks. So yeah. that would be yeah. a bigger one, but that's just kind of like along those lines. You know, you, they have those things for your headphones that like make them like retractable or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We do from our booth. We always do an iPod. We just get a little iPod shuffle, fifty bucks of one word. Yeah. It's music related. And yeah. So. Nice. And you give away one of those to your. Yeah, you know, any kind of life hack item. <laughs> I don't know who's been getting those, but I don't have one. Yeah, so, so there's a couple of things in your booth. One is any kind of giveaway that you have, and one is special offers. And so. A, a good way to, to get somebody to buy something, and we're all susceptible to this, is to have a limited time offer. And it just it just hooks you. It hooks everybody. There's something about our makeup. And so think about what your limited time offer could be. And it could be X percent off of your services. It could be a, a certain number of dollar amount or a percentage amount. Um, it could be, any, if you're a photographer, an engagement session included with anybody who books within a week of the show or two weeks of the show, something like that. I would not suggest making it go for any longer than two weeks after the show because you want them to get with you while they're still hot and in excited and buying mode. You have a comment on this, don't you? I do. Oh, okay. You were just like... No, I agree. Okay. <laughs> Get that. You mean refer other vendors? No, it's like uh, like if you're a caterer, uh -huh. um, you know, you could give away some part of your catering for a wedding, but don't forget about rehearsal dinners and uh, the bridal shower, food, things like that. That the bride's not paying for. It could be the groom's mother, sure. you know, okay. or something like this, so that everybody. Because we get a little over 300 brides at the show, but we get 900 people in there, and all of those are potential clients of yours. You know, it's just not a wedding necessarily. You know, it could be for for wine, wine tasting, uh, wine giveaways. Speaking of wine, do you, are you allowed to serve alcohol? At you can do wine tasting okay. at the show, and anybody who wants to do wine tasting in their booth, email me, and I'll send you the specific rules that Madonna Inn has about that. Um, it's pretty simple, but it's, it's very specific, and it's about their alcohol license, and they don't want to lose it. So you can have taste, but not drinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is not on topic, but you said, I just want to say it before I forget and yeah. bring it up later. Um, I'm just curious if anyone is doing something to signify themselves as LGBT friendly or not LGBT friendly. LGBT. That's just a question. <laughs> I think yeah. 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 So there's gay weddings now. Like, oh, right. Right. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Right. I didn't need to think about that. It's a, it's yeah. a good, you are very on trend. Are you really part of my job? Um, I I would like to because I yeah. because I am, but I just I didn't know if there was you know for like gay bars they have this little rectangle ra rainbow thing, and I just didn't know if there was something out there that people are right. using yeah. or saying. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Like, we want to. We don't. We we just haven't gotten that far yet. Okay, so everyone is interested. Talk to me. We'll, <laughs> we'll all be like. Well, have well, you know, for us, um, we we try, because there is a definite 
part of the population that doesn't agree with it. So we don't advertise either way. I mean, we will definitely do gay weddings. Their money is just as green as anyone else's, so I totally don't care. Um, but, you know, if they come and talk to us, talk to them. If not, we don't, because we don't want to... They don't want to scare yeah, them. Like, if there's some super conservative right. person that sees a rainbow right. on your thing, it's like, oh, I'm not going But that's, that's just how we do it. I mean, but that doesn't mean that's the right way to do it. That's just our personal... Or yeah. my personal view on it, I don't want to chase away a bride and groom that may. But if you want that to be part of like your company's personality, sure. is that this is yeah. something you want to sell to yeah. 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 And I, I think I think awesome. Anthony has a really good point. We've had yeah. some experience with issues on um, both sides with the the gay wedding things at the bridal shows, and so uh, a gay couple came through a few years ago, and uh, one particular vendor they went to talk to, and the vendor was very non-friendly for gays and insulted them and I don't think they said you're going to hell but it was something like that <laughs> and, and so they were they were very upset and but the next person of that that uh, category was very nice to them and you know things worked out for them at the show but it can be it can be difficult for them and at the at our fall show this last year something happened it was a, a gay male couple were there and they felt unwelcomed by a couple of the exhibitors and so we're actually going to send an email out uh, before this show um, to make sure that everyone knows that you know it's against the law to discriminate yeah. if you don't use your brain. I remember, I remember, I remember so cute and charming. I mean, I love yeah. chatting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So yeah, they let us know they were upset. As the show producer, have you seen an increase in? And gay couples? No. 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 And you know, we, we looked into it. We were thinking about, you know, a gay show and all of that kind of thing. But you know, we just don't have enough of those weddings here to to market specifically. You know, I'm sure in San Francisco and LA where they have that kind of population density that they can, but we don't have enough of that here. And and like Anthony said, some people just are so adamantly against it that it would hurt our business right. if we specifically targeted gays. Mm -hmm. We would have people who would boycott us. And so we just are neutral, mm -hmm. and we welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at changing our bride and groom name on our registration form to something like partner and partner, you know, something like that that's neutral. Yeah, mine just says fiance one. Yeah, that's what ours says. Ours says your name and fiance's name. Okay, so, that's good. Okay. But that being said, I have I have definitely booked gay weddings at, at your fair before. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's just something that you know, are, I don't know. They are there. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done a lot already this year, so. Yeah. I was going to say, down in Santa Barbara County, because that's where I am, it's, yeah, it's totally, I mean, that's all over the place. So. Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of so, yeah, I think, like Jasmine said, maybe something that doesn't scream it, but just yeah. a little rainbow so something. You don't have to be like, yay, in for days. days that flashing lights. <laughs> Most people have that. That's the name of a company. Name of a company. <laughs> but, <laughs> I just went out of business. Um, I was just curious. I didn't mean to do it. But, yeah, I think most people wouldn't even know what that meant. You know, well, except for somebody who's gay, and then they'll go, oh, awesome, they're gay friendly. Yeah. You know, true. kind of thing. So I think something like that would be fun. Ask for their business. You know, I never did that until I started doing these presentations. Yeah. Just you know? it probably because I'm really bad at that. What, what does that look like? I mean, right, it's like, obviously you're there for your business, but... Oh, I'm just having such a great time talking with you. Your wedding sounds awesome. Oh, I would really love to do your wedding. I hope that you have a... Yeah, you know, got it. Kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it makes a difference. <laughs> you know, it was the best at that is Bob. Bob oh, is Bob. so good. Hey, Bob. At, he's so good at saying his last words out of the booth are, I want to be your DJ. I want That's to be awesome. your DJ. So as they're walking away, he's like... Remember, I want to be your teacher. <laughs> so he's really yeah, you can good. use humor. It's like, oh, what? Well, me and you. Me and you. Really, really good. Or sometimes, like, I learn, like, um, you even have to be more direct than I would love to work with you. Or if, so, in your case, it would be like, would you like to place an order today? Because for people who place an order today, I'm offering X, Y, Z. Yeah. Awesome. Or, or deal. Yeah. Or book them for a tasty. Or like, just set up with them. So when would you like have an to action plan? plan? Yeah. Exactly. Action. Okay, and then, like realtors, you know, you can ask for referrals. I wouldn't do that at the bridal show, but somewhere down the line with all of your clients, you know, because 
most of them are, you know, know somebody else. And once they've used your services, they've just got to let their friends know about you. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit more about booth design. So we talked about the foundation, so it's 8 by 10, 10 feet across the front, 8 feet deep. Um, comes with an 8 foot table and a chair. I recommend you do not get the chair. Um, <laughs> it's better to not sit down. Oh, and you won't have time to sit down, hopefully. It'll just be too busy. Um, but if you have multiple people working in your booth or you have somebody that needs to sit now and then and without walking all the way to the kitchen, it's fine to have a chair in your booth. Um, so don't feel like you have to not have a chair, but as far as the sales go, it's better to be standing up and welcoming and talking to people and moving around in your booth than to be sitting down. Um, I've been to shows before where there's two people sitting down behind a table talking to each other. And I wanted to talk to them. I was interested in the service. I even stood at the table while they talked for a while. And I finally walked away. You know, I just didn't want to have anything to do with them. So make sure you don't do that, you know, and think about uh, not eating or drinking in your booth. Well, drinking's okay, but eating in the booth is, is not a good idea. Um, it's, it's messy, it looks unprofessional, and we have a kitchen available for you to go and take a break and have something to eat. Um, and um, so you have the table and the chairs, and then you can bring anything else that you want into your booth. Um, and again, think about using that vertical space in some way. Booth do's and don'ts. The, the main few are, think about your neighbors, you know, especially the ones to the side. You don't want to move into their territory, either in the booth or in the aisle. You should not be outside of the front of your booth in the aisle. That space is for the brides that are moving through. And so you want to be able to have space in the front of your booth to bring brides in and out of the aisle because they'll be getting jostled around as people are walking by and you don't want them to feel uncomfortable and get irritated with people bumping into them. So bring them into your booth so they feel comfortable staying there and talking to you. Um, and don't stand in front of your neighbor's booth. Um, don't grab somebody out of your neighbor's booth <laughs> or from in front of your neighbor's booth. We've had that complaint. So it's the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so you want to maintain that kind of respectful posture. And hopefully everybody else will do the same. And, um, and that's the main thing. And then think about, again, things like if you're using any kind of scent in your booth, you want to not trespass in any way. So you want anything that you're doing in your booth to not pass the boundaries of your booth. So any noise, any music, if you have candles. Yeah. And, and but we should not have light lit candles anymore. We should just have because the fire would have been crackling down. Yeah. And so, yeah, no fire in the booth. I mean, unless yeah. you're catering. Like, Peter thing. We have electricity and we provide electricity to you in your booth. How many pockets or outlets? We provide one outlet, so you'll need an extension cord and a, 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 a power strip mm -hmm. kind of thing, so you can put power anywhere in your booth that you want it. Now, on that note, with lighting, I'm assuming, I mean, obviously the hall is already lit. With all of these backdrops and stuff, is it good to have, like, mood lighting kind it's of? It's super good to have okay. lighting in your booth. Super good. It's really important. Okay. You can have the best sign in the world, but, and, and, and it's a warehouse. Really. Okay. The place we're at is a warehouse. You're not going to have excellent lighting over your booth. Uh, one booth in ten might. But right. you're not going to have the lamp necessarily right over your booth. So lighting is very important in your booth. And everything looks better with lighting. And so think about lighting. You can attach it to the, the pipe behind your booth and project it down. You can have something on the floor projecting up. Um, and if you have anything like jewelers really need lighting on their jewelry, um, on your, your sign at the top, you should have light projecting onto that to highlight that. That's really important. And so think about all those kinds of things. And if you're a photographer, you're going to have multiple photographs in your booth, so you're going to want to have some, some kind of lighting on those too. And if you don't know anything about lighting, talk to Anthony or any other DJ, and they'll be happy to tell you all you want to know about lighting. What's the and height possibly rent you some lights. Yeah. The height restriction? Uh, you can go as far as building, if you've got well, a backdrop. I'm thinking of the booth as being seven and a half, eight foot, and then mm -hmm. having the lights come over the top as there. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's not an obtrusive. I mean, the ceiling is like 20 feet higher. The ceiling is like, yeah, 20 feet higher. Yeah. Okay, Quick question about the music and sound levels. Mm -hmm. Because we'd like to demonstrate what our playing is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How disruptive is that, or is it acceptable? You're not amplified, right? No. No, you're fine. Okay. 
Yeah. It's so fine. loud in there yeah. that yeah. only the people around you are going to hear okay. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And obviously, if a neighbor complains, you know, try to not do it as often. But I don't, I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Yeah. You know, it's more like when we used to allow DJs to have amplified music, and yeah. we would ask them to keep it down, and as we walked away, you could hear it going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, no more amplified anything. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, for the sign event, there's different ways we can do it, but I, I always get the wrong size. What size have you seen, like something up top that works really well? Well, the booth's 10 feet wide. So, so that would be something all the way 10 down. feet max. Okay. Um, and it used to be everybody did their signs on uh, roll up oh, bell yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Or and you know, I, I, I like the, um, the foam board or metal, you know, those kinds of things. Or putting signs on, on it's nice to have something rigid okay. so that when you hang it, it doesn't curl. And so if it's on vinyl, it's going to curl and you're going to need to tie the sides and everything. And so um, probably like, two feet mm -hmm. tall, and then six or eight feet wide kind of thing, and get your logo and what you do up there, because your business name, it could just be like Target, for example, mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean anything to somebody who's walking by quickly. But if you say photography or chiropractor or you know DJ, they know exactly what you do. Okay. And so what you do is as important or more important than your business name on your sign, so make sure that that's up there. You can have other signs in your booth too if you're doing a giveaway um, or a promotion. I would get some kind of frame and have that promotion in that sitting on the table or you know, some kind of foam board from a sign company and make sure that that's visible uh, because you're going to want them to be signing up for that. And I'd put that kind of toward the front of the booth so that they can see it as they're walking by. Oh, quick question. Mm -hmm. I, I have this little vision of like a little kind of sweet shop sign sticking out like, you know, Mm -hmm. on the street, but I don't want to infringe onto the, yeah. like, out of my booth. So, could I maybe, like, put a pole that's, like, two feet within my booth, but have that be, like, the facade of my booth and have the little sign sticking out? So, is it, like, the old ki old timey sign? Yeah, like, like metal the thing with the little dentist that, thing or whatever? Yeah. We're you like, could do that. Okay. Yeah. It'll be, like, we'll over their head. It would have to be, you know, like, seven yeah. feet tall right. or something like Depending that. Depending on how far it's hanging down. Yeah. Okay. That would be fun and it doesn't block the view. And if it's just like on a freestanding like pole or something so it's not like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 something on the face. Right. So it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. 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 I mean, it probably will have a table base. there right next to it and it would just mm -hmm. be on the front corner of the table mm -hmm. so it would be not in the walkway or anything mm -hmm. but I didn't, okay. Yeah. And then my other quick question when you're talking about branding and stuff. If we were, like, say we're doing donuts and cupcakes, but, like, if I have, um, like, we have a wine company that we work with that we do donut wine pairings with. If I were to do a wine tasting that was paired with our donuts, but they're not, like, sponsoring the booth, mm -hmm. but that's, like, a whole other brand that's going to be present in the booth, is that, like, a no-no, or is that... We'll need to talk about that. Yeah, that's that's don't about about sharing. Right. And so that's starting to, starting to get into kind of yeah, the zone. Yeah, because I don't know. And I mean, like, if we did it with no label on the bottle or something, I don't know, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, mm -hmm. but. And also, we'd have to talk to Madonna to see if, because it is about... For them, it's the, the winery, and so where's the responsibility, the liability? Right, kind and of then thing. Like would it be yeah. you? Or are we gonna so you yeah. buy the wine, and then you're serving wine to people. Right. So then the liability would be yours. Right. Mm -hmm. So we would have to have like we wouldn't fall we wouldn't fall under Madonna Inn's liquor license. In that case, we would be on our own liquor license. Which yeah, Madonna Inn is outside of our building. I don't even know where that's. Yeah. Stands, so. yeah. Okay. It gets kind of great. So why don't you call yeah. us and we'll talk about okay. that in more detail. I don't even know. I just I don't even know that we would do that. I just, right. It's just a thought. Just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and then design ideas. Why don't we talk about design ideas when we're looking through the photos? Um, promotional materials. So you're going to want to have things for brides to take with them so that they remember you. And so there's all kinds of things you can do. Print, of course, would be your brochure. Um, your business card, uh, you might have a flyer with specials. If, you have, if you're doing a special, whatever you have in your frame, you're going to want to let them take that special home with them too. Um, because they're going to fill up their bag with stuff, and when they get home, maybe not that day, but someday that week, they're going to kind of go through everything, and they're going to find that, and, and you want them to find, find those things. So think about what kind of printed materials that you're going to want to have in your booth. 
And then uh, for your giveaways, you can, like Anthony says, he gives away that. Yeah. And um, what was it that you mentioned, Jasmine? There was some kind of small, really inexpensive thing. Fitbit. Oh, oh the Fitbit. No, that's not an expensive yeah. thing. <laughs> but, yeah. There, there are some people that give something away to everybody. You know, and it's those kinds of little trinket things that you get for 50 cents each kind of thing. And not that many people do that, but some people do like a quartz a wine opener with your business name on it, if you have that kind of thing, depending on how big your business is. Some people do that. Smaller businesses typically don't. A little baggie with candy or something like that. Candy is very popular. Any kind of food interview is a magnet. So um, we used to, Kaleidoscope collide, collide in when we have a booth, um, we always had Percy's Kisses or, uh, no, we had Tootsie Roll Pops. And they love it. And you see everybody walking around with a Tootsie Roll Pop. And it's like, they do so much branding now on M&M's and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I bet there's a way that you could get some branded candy with your logo on it mm -hmm. and have that in your booth. And there's still time, I think, for ordering that kind of thing if you wanted to think about doing something like that. Or it could be unbranded candy. Or think of something that or nobody else would be thinking of. Or a little bag of Slow Donut Company. <laughs> 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 And then your signage, we talked about, you know, your big sign. Hopefully you have a big sign up top. Um, you may want some other signage in your booth, like for the giveaway or for promotions, things like that. Any kind of signs that you want to have in your booth. Um, some people uh, also use little tabletop easel kind of things for their signage. And it just depends on what you have that you want to show them. Um, and postcards and posters. We have postcards and posters for the show. Here's a, an example of a poster. We've got a small one here, and we've got bigger ones. So we'll be giving you guys some of those to take home with you if you've got a place to put them. And then the postcards we have, you can mail them. There's a place for you to stamp your business name on them. I recommend, if you're giving away postcards, to put your business logo stamp on them so that when you give them away, they know where they came from. And they'll see your name again. It's another opportunity for them to see your name. And just stamp or a little peel and stick thing, however you want to do it. Um, but I would recommend putting your name on the postcards even if you're handing them out. And it's nice to let brides know about what's going on. You can let them know about the bridal show. You can let them know about any kind of other bridal event that's going on. Quick question. Yeah. Um, you're talking about flyers with your special, like a limited time special that yeah. we can take. How many flyers? Like how many would you oh, recommend having on your tables? I'd recommend at least 350. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And you don't want to run out. Um, the very first show that the Kaleidoscope did, we ran out of brochures fairly early on. And it was a very frustrating experience mm -hmm. to watch all those brides walking by and we didn't have anything to get them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, how many so at so least 350. I would bring, it, if, if you're giving away um, um, your brochure and it's a brochure that you use for other things too, bring 600. Mm -hmm. You know, bring more than you think you need. You want to go home with extras rather than be left without enough. Um, and so, but for the things that you're using just for the show, I'd say really 400, just to make sure, um, because people who are not the bride will be taking them to, and we log about 300, 330 <coughs> brides at the shows, but there's a lot of brides who don't register. They don't fill out the registration form. So we don't know how many there are. We know there's at least 330. There could be 400. You know, so plan for more. And it's normal for them to make it all the way through the whole, yeah. all the booths. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes yeah. twice. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, if you do have something that's more expensive to print and you don't want to produce a thousand of them, you could always produce a number of the, the nicer quality and then have a backup of something less expensive so that at least you have something to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if you run out of your nicer stuff and your other not so nice stuff, you still have business cards, you know, that is. You get a thousand business cards for, I don't know, 50 bucks or so. So, yeah, make sure that you've got something. Yeah. Um, so I know that a lot of people come in addition to the brides. When they register or they come in, do they have anything like sticker, name tag, so we yeah. know bride is bride? Okay. Yeah, we have a, a blue bride tag okay. and a black groom tag. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little circles that they wear. And sometimes they don't wear them, though. So. But it does kind of help you identify who the bride is. But the bride is not necessarily the uh, decision maker. Right. So sometimes it's the mom or the dad or the groom. So don't just solely focus on the bride. <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to give you electronic copies of the postcards. Those are go out in email. And so you can email those to people or post them anywhere. 
And we'll also have a uh, Facebook sized banner that you can post on your Facebook page or anywhere else to talk about the show to people. So you have lots of opportunities for promoting yourself at the show. And then in your booth, we were talking about um, how to get people's attention when there's so much going on. And something motion, something active in your booth is one of the best things you can do. And everybody's using either a laptop computer or a monitor or a flat screen TV, since flat screen TVs are so easy to move around now compared to those thick TVs that we used to have to move around. And they fit in the booth better. So have something, have your promotional video scrolling on a screen of some kind in your booth. And if you don't have a promotional video, you can take a bunch of photos and go to animoto.com and stick your photos in there and it'll create a video for you. What's it called? Animoto, A-N-I-M-O-T-O dot com. And it's really easy and they let you, there's a limited number of photos, a limited length of video that they'll let you do for free. And then you could pay a little bit to get a longer video. And then they've got the, the music that you can use with it as well. So, uncopyrighted music somehow. And, and it's great, once you make it, you can put it on your website, you can put it on your Facebook page, you can put it everywhere. Vimeo on YouTube and have it running on your screen at the Broadway show. <clears throat> so fiddle with it a little bit, it's nice, and uh, it tends to want to go real fast, and so I always make it go the slowest pace that it will go. But whatever you think is better for your business. Um, so staff, one of the most important things about the show is who's in your booth. Um, most of us are small business owners, so for a lot of you it's going to be you. Uh, but who else is going to be there? It shouldn't be just you, you should have at least one other person in the booth with you. Uh, you want a qualifier and a closer. And it could be at some times you're both going to be qualifying. Um, and so uh, we talked a little bit about the personality type, so you want the really outgoing personality person to be your qualifier who's up the aisle and your closer to be inside the booth, hopefully at a table where you could be signing contracts and with your uh, planner so that you know what dates you have available. And make sure that the people who are in your booth are dressed professionally, act professionally, talk professionally, that they know everything about your business that there is to know, that they know what your objective is. And so you need to know what your objective is too. Everybody has a different objective at a bridal show. Um, a florist, more than likely wants to book a consult because it somebody when you're busy booking them. But if you have enough well, people in your booth... What objective is to, is to book, so I know. if you're well, booking, you're... <laughs> right. With modern objective. technology, I mean, you can have your iPad there and have them book it in like 30 seconds exactly. or less. Yeah, if you get things set up well, to where you're ready yeah. to go. It doesn't take that long mm -hmm. to book anymore. Right. Nice. I might we'll be obsessed with booking in the booth, but I like it so much that if I have someone that calls the week of and says that they want to book me, I'll tell them, I'll tell you what, I'll pay for your, I'll pay for you and however many girlfriends you want to come into the fair, if you book with me at the fair. You come to me first, I'll book, book you, because I want, I totally want people seeing me booking, you know, because it breeds, you know, activity breeds activity, so right. if they see it, they're like, oh, you know, so, I'll, I give them an incentive. Too. Sweet. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with the brides that you've already booked for the year. You know, you can reward them with uh, a, a ticket to the show. Or um, we're, we're also going to be sending out, I don't think we sent it out yet, the discount code. We did send out the email. We did send that out. If some reason didn't get it, then definitely talk to us okay. about getting that. Yeah. And we're going to send it out again, too. Yeah. So. And, and you guys request it, and then we give you a, a personalized one so that 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's got your name or whatever, so it's something special that you can give them. So we can email. like send them an email that's a ticket to the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's three dollars off. So they so like we'll get we'll give them like so. Oh, I see. So we're just sending them something or something. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, so the tickets to the show were $10 for the expo, oh, and tickets for the fashion show plus the expo were $15. Mm -hmm. And that's if they buy in at the door. If they buy online, it's $2 off of every ticket. And on this, I'm sorry, there's also $5 groom tickets for the expo. So everybody gets $2 off. So the groom tickets become $3, and the bride and everybody else tickets become $8 for the expo, unless they're also going to do the fashion show, and then it's $5. And what we do for the discount code is we make a code that has some version of your business name in it, and you can give them an additional dollar off of the show. And so that's another thing that you can put on your Facebook page or wherever to have another reason to reach out to the bride and say, I'm going to be in the show, and I can give you an extra dollar off for everybody in your wedding party. And some people bring eight, ten people to the show with them. So, you know, all of that adds up. And is that something, that extra dollar off, that's just something you track and you pay later, or you're gifting that? You don't pay it, that's gifted. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, give it away. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what does that work? They mention like... Yeah, you just send us an email, and we're going to give you a code. Ah. And so your code will be Biddle. Okay. And then you can post on your Facebook page, I can give you an extra dollar off the big bridal show coming up. Sweet. Okay. Here's Thank my code. Go okay. buy your ticket at, here's the link to the ticket place. Here's the code. Put my code in. You'll get an extra dollar off. Okay. And then, yeah. Cool. Thank so, you. Play devil's advocate, Carol. Can yeah. they come to me as a florist and get that code and go to someone else and get the code, or you get to catch that? Uh -huh. They can't use two codes. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the system won't take more than one code. You need $5 to go to your show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then and train your staff. Make sure they understand all of your products, all of your services, what your objectives are, what you expect them to do in the booth. Are they supposed to sell? Are they supposed to be the qualifier? Do you want them to be in the booth the whole time? Do you want them in the kitchen networking with other exhibitors? What exactly do you want them to do? So be really clear with what you want them to do and what your objectives are. And a great way to get people to perform is a classic example is work. You pay people to work for you. They wouldn't work for you unless you paid them. What's another way to incentivize somebody? You know, think about other ways to incentivize somebody to do the best job possible for you. Is it 50 extra dollars for every wedding that they book that comes through them at the show? Um, it can be a percentage, it can be a dollar amount, it can be an iPod, it can be anything. But if you give them, it's like a commission. And so they don't get it if you don't get it. And so it doesn't cost you much, um, but it, gives you a little extra edge in getting your people, any of your hired people to do the work, or maybe you've got family working for you, same thing. So think about what kind of incentive you can use with your staff. Ice cream truck? You know, at Christmas, Santa Claus comes down, the parade comes right down the street, he goes up and down all the streets <laughs> with the fire truck honking his horn. <laughs> so your presentation. Um, this is going to start to get redundant because we talked about a lot of things already. But you're, you're presenting to the bride, and so you want to engage your prospects. And like we talked about, motion is the best thing you can do, but try to use as many senses as you can. And that's going to help get them having beautiful things in your booth, something they just absolutely got to come into your booth to take a look at. Um, all of those kinds of things. Another is to be approachable. Uh, like we talked about, the two girls sitting behind the booth talking to each other and not looking at the people that they were coming by. That's not approachable. You want to be approachable. So have a pleasant look on your face, have some energy, and get things moving in your booth. And make them remember you. And again, the way to make them remember you is really the kind, same kind of way you get them to come into your booth. Um, you know, be approachable, have a good image, get your branding down, um, and then use more senses. Like you talked about, when you give them your brochure, write something on it. Do something exceptional that nobody else is doing. Just any little thing that will help them to remember you. And then post-show opportunities. Um, you want top of mind awareness. That means when they think about, I'm ready to book my hairstylist, who are they going to think about first? You want that person to be you. And so how do you do that? You've got to get your name in front of them seven times. And so pre-show promotion, at-show promotion, post-show promotion. So talk about how you were at the show, you were in booth XYZ, you met all these cool brides, 
and you can't wait to talk to them soon. You can send out an email to the brides that are in our database that we're going to send to you. You can um, track them down on Facebook and friend them. You know, once you get their names, you can do all kinds of things. Um, we don't give you a phone uh, number. Um, uh, so yeah, you can talk about it on your blog and talk about your business and what booth you were in and all those kinds of things. You can even say, I was the one giving away the branded lollipops, you know, kind of thing. Things that are going to make them remember you. So think about the things that you're using while you're there to make them remember you. And use those things again when you start talking about yourself after the show. So top of mind awareness is about repetition. So think of ways to make sure that they see you, hear you, see your logo more than once. Um, methods and timing, I would recommend, uh, we, we, get the sh we get the list out to you within two weeks. We normally have it to you by Wednesday of the first week. So we try to get it out really fast because you gotta hit while the iron's hot. And while they're still excited, while they're still in that mood. And so we recommend that when you get that list, that you sort it according to your business type because you don't want to be emailing brides that already have a venue. So sort it by business type, there's going to be a little X as to what each bride still needs. And so sort it by the X's in your column. If you're a florist, sort by the florist column. And you can just delete everybody else because they don't mean anything to you. They're not your client. And only market those people. And so first you sort it by what they need and then you sort it by wedding date. And so the ones that are getting married soonest, those are the ones you want to contact first because they're going to be booking stuff faster. So those are your hottest leads. Mm -hmm. So look at it in those kinds of ways. And uh, then you can contact them uh, via email. Um, so, so I would recommend contacting them as soon as you can um, with a thank you for coming to the show. I hope you saw me at my booth. Or if you have your list and you remember from the little notes that you've taken, the bride's name, send them a personalized email. Personalized email works a lot better than a bulk email. So think of ways that you're going to be able to identify these brides. And so you can go through our list and see if you can put identifying information next to them. And they'll be your hotter, their hotter leads. But you're going to want to contact them more than once. So think about other reasons to contact them. You know, one, you'll say, I really loved your, loved your ideas for your wedding. I'd love to do it. Uh, ask for their business, um, but you want to do more than ask for their business. You want to let them know of other things that are going on. And so, uh, other trends in the industry, you know, if you've got some cool boho chic photos of something that you talked about at the show, send them a photo that you think they might like, that might work with them for their wedding. So think about creative reasons to talk to them, and it's always about helping them. How can you help them realize their vision for their wedding? And Pinterest is a great thing, so you can find all kinds of great photos on Pinterest that you can forward over to them. So think out of the box on those kinds of reasons for your contact. Ask for their business, ask for referrals. <clears throat> We've talked about access dates and times. Uh, exhibitor unloading and parking. Uh, you unload. Hi guys, thanks for coming. Um, so you'll unload, uh, it's a one way around the building on the right, so you go around the building to the right. You will have somebody, as you're coming up the hill, they'll tell you where your booth's located and tell you which door is the best access point for you. Mm -hmm. And so just follow their directions and they'll put you as close as they can to your booth so that your unloading's going to be a lot easier. If we're renting, <coughs> excuse me, if we're renting some items, um, do we actually have to physically bring them in or can like the company drop it off for us? We just have to tell them the booth? Yeah. And, then, okay, yeah. we'll and they'll come on Saturday and bring it. It'll be in your booth when you get there. Oh, it, it, like I mean stuff that we're not renting for you guys. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. From from Taylor Rental or Gotcha Covered or any other rental company? Yeah, um, um, furniture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they can bring it in on the Saturday from 12.30 to 2.30. Okay. They can bring it in and we'll tell them where your booth is. You don't need to be there. Okay. Um, and there used to not be parking up where the expo hall is, but there is now. So it's behind the expo hall on the left-hand side. And there's going to be plenty of people there working that will be directing you to where your parking is. And so that will be very easy. And uh, once that parking lot's full, we do have a lot down by the arena as well. And food and drink, um, there is drink available up at the expo center. The Madonna Inn sets up a bar. And so if you want to have a drink, you're welcome to have a drink. They have a bar, but they used to have food, but they don't have food anymore. So that tells us that most exhibitors like to drink more than eat. Than <laughs> so, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a drink to take the edge off before the show starts, because you can get a lot of adrenaline going. So if you're nervous, 
they have all kinds of fun drinks. Um, <laughs> call them cocktails. Um, and then if you need food, the Madonna Hotel is at the base. They've got a cafe. You can order a hamburger and then go down or send somebody down to pick it up for you. Um, and then there's also like McDonald's just down the way, and there's Chipotle and Pandera. Yeah. Uh, all that's really close. I have a question. You might have said it earlier because I'm uh -huh. late, but can you bring things in the night before? The day before from 12.30 to 2.30 on Saturday. Yeah, you can bring all your stuff <coughs> and set up as much as you're able to in that time. Okay. When, when will we be sending out the information on the booth we have, our numbers? And that that's going to be within two weeks of the show. Okay. So okay. probably not until two weeks before the show. The reason I'm asking because you're saying, you know, offering the offs to people. Oh, yeah. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. So just leave off some of the number part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see us at. Don't. Yeah, see us at the show. Yeah. And then show etiquette. We kind of talked about that already. Uh, your area, you should stay within your area, keep your volume down. Uh, networking is great, but don't do it during the show. You can do it before the show, you can do it after the show, you can do it in the kitchen, but people are at the show to talk to the brides. And so be, uh, just be aware of that. Uh, if they're not busy, I'm sure they'd love to talk to you, but if they're busy setting up their booth, they're stressed and they want to get it finished. So, so think of those things. And uh, food, um, there's food all around the building, and there's food in the building at the caterer's booths, but the food that the caterers brought is for the bites. And so try to resist their tempting food items <laughs> until 2.30 or 3 kind of thing. And then they're going to be happy to start unloading them because they don't want to carry them home. And so if things thin out, then you're free to walk around. Um, and we, we're very aware during the show itself of uh, non-exhibitors who are trying to market the brides in the aisles. And it happens every show. We police it. If you see it, let one of us know. And in fact, we're going to give everybody our, our cell phone numbers this time. And if you see something, you can text it. Because otherwise you have to kind of try to run around and find one of us and tell us. And you don't want to do that because you're in their booth. But you know, we've had people come up and say, there's a, there's a lady in a fur vest and she's talking to brides and passing out information, and we track her down and we guess where we're out. And because you are paying for the show, they're not. And so we don't want anybody else to benefit from it but you. And um, it takes away from your cut of the business, you know, if it's another photographer or another florist or whatever. And the same thing, they put things on the car's windshields. And so we police, police the parking lot, we police the show aisles, we police the bathrooms, because they put postcards in the bathrooms. And so, uh, we, we keep it down, and Anthony loves it when he sees his escort somebody out. <laughs> and then, of course, the golden rule, you know, do unto your neighbor as you would have done unto yourself. Okay, so we're at the end of that, and anybody, if you've got time, we'll show you some, um, some photos. <laughs>